Hello boys and girls and children of all ages, it's this week's Monkey Nut Punch podcast and uh, we're doing a regular one this week and then we'll do a different one next week. So, I'm hoping you liked them last week's one, I hope the YouTube algorithm liked it too. It doesn't appear to, to have too off, but hey, we'll try. So, um, we got some notes from one of our viewers last week. Uh, we're going to talk about something we want to talk about uh, and then we're going to go through what... Uh, Bilfer put down on the thingy, and I'm hoping he'll turn up at one point. So, uh, how we doing, Nige? Haven't seen you in the world. Yeah, all good, man. Oh, Keith? <laughs> well, Bilf is in the house. I, I am I am fine. I am fine. I am, I am, I am moving along, as they say. <laughs> moving along, yes. Yes, uh, we all had some fun. I, I, I spent the middle of the week up top of a skyscraper, and I found out something very disturbing about skyscrapers. They wobble. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't notice. They... It does, it, 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 I'm standing up there. It's like, is this thing wobbling, or is it me? No, no, it's yeah, they're, they're designed to move with the wind. Oh, and you Wait, can which one it, were you so... at? Are you at the one in London that looks a bit, you know, Robocop vibes that you sent me, which it fucking was, actually. Hund- <laughs> a, a place called Hundred Bishops Gate. It's called, mm. and I was on the thirty-fourth floor there, which put us almost at the same height as the top of the of Swiss Re, the big egg building in London. Mm. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun for a company event, and uh, yeah, I could feel it. I got up there, I could feel it wobble, and I was like, oh my god. The thing is, it made me feel like I was expecting turbulence any moment. But hey ho. Anyway, this week we will be talking about Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Um. Elon Musk buying Twitter, which is interesting. Uh, some idiot started a fight with uh, Mike Tyson on a plane. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Um, and then someone also um, tried to t- tackle Dave Chappelle while he was uh, on stage. And there's some other bits. But we'll get to them when we get to them. So let's talk about Strange New Worlds. Keith, mm-hmm. you insisted that I watch this. You go, Gareth, you watch this. I need to watch this. I need to know what your opinion on, is on this. I like it. What would you think? Well, um, I, I said that, okay, I said that, that compared to every other um, Trek series, I I liked this one out of all of them because it felt like the most Trek thing that they'd done since Enterprise, really. Um I, it's not. It is fucking far from perfect. It still has really clunky modern dialogue, which is badly written mm. um, because it sounds like you know they're 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 ca- you know all sitting in a cafe in California, and that's bad. There, are, it, it, it's far from perfect, and the second episode shows that even more so. But there are moments that feel like Trek. Yeah, uh, and. It, 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 it the, the one thing I will give it is it's not downtrodden. It doesn't feel it, it's far more upbeat. It's far more hopeful. Happy. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. It still it's has a billion perfect. producers at the start, though. Oh yeah, it. and, it's got more producers than it has actors in the in the TV show. Dear I Hollywood, think... do you want to save money? Bin all those executive producers. That's it. It's like they are something. They're doing something again that they haven't done in in Picard, or because Picard was shockingly bad, um, or any of that. That we are getting clearly defined characters, and each episode is giving us an introduction to a new to a new character. So this week, on the second episode, we got like a, a more of an intrigue into Uhuru, um, but again, her. They do insist on giving them all tragic backgrounds. It's like it's just lazy writing. It's just it's it's lazy writing that that, that 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 to make a character interesting they've had to have some kind of tragedy in their background. Talk about fucking cliche. It's badly written, but it's better than than a lot of it. You used the words before we got on, and and I agree with you. Spectacularly average or just average, but it, yeah. you're right. It's not brilliant. It's not like oh, you have to see this. It's just the best damn thing that they've done. Okay, so just I'm I've got the I've got the file that uh, I watched it on. I mean, <clears throat> the le- totally legitimate file that I watched it on. Um, so I'm just trying to go through it, and it's the the 
it, yeah, you're right. It feels it doesn't feel as dour. They've given tragic backstories in. That's what I'm trying to think. In um, next generation, you had two back characters who tra- tragic backstories. Yeah, you yes. had Wolf, whose parents were killed at um, Kitama, or whatever it was. Yeah, and then you had Natasha Yar, who grew up on a planet it was a shit hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then you had Data, who was just an android that was abandoned by his creator. Um, then you had Picard, and he was fine. And then you had Riker, he was fine. And you had Troy, fine. Crusher, fine. Crusher's problem. Uh, Crusher's had a tra- slightly tragic backstory because her husband died. Uh, but I imagine that was after she met. We after we met Wesley. Um, <laughs> I was so bad. Um, the thing is, I, I kind of like what they've done with the bridge. They've made it more neutral rather than the blue that was in Discovery. Um, mm-hmm. The engineering set is more interesting than it was in Discovery. I, I've just, just um, stick with the, just, just stick with the characters for a moment. Yeah. But, well, so, I mean, you, okay. You, I like Handsome Mount. I like. We haven't had too much of an introduction into Number One yet to know she's got a tragic background. Um, we've got the new engineer that's just turned up and he is one of those not andorians the the, the sort of albanian <laughs> albino albanian andorian no, albanian no, albino andorians that, that are blind um and there's quite a funny scene at the beginning of the second episode where they haze uhuru because she runs over to help him he's like what makes you think i need help and then and then there's like this toing and froing from Spock as they rip the piss out of her. They haze her, basically. And that was quite funny. Um, yeah. And actually, like, the the story was an interesting one. It wasn't... I heard some writers say, oh, it, you know, they're, they're using sci-fi tropes. The third episode looks like that. The second episode, actually, no, I don't think it was. It was um, about an asteroid heading for a planet that... that had a pre-warp civilization on it um they realize that the asteroid's about to hit so they decide to blow it up and as they fire the missiles at it the damn thing shields itself it was like what (laughs) you know and then they beam onto it and then these bunch of religious zealots turn up and go look don't attack it we're the guardians if this thing's gonna hit that's what you know god deemed it to be um and and so you get this like battle scene which is kind of cool um, and, and and meanwhile, Uhura has to work out how to communicate with the asteroid. That that kind of thing. But actually, the ending was pretty interesting. Not something that they'd done, and it kind of made you think a bit. Um, and um, I, I I liked I liked the overarching arcing story, if that makes sense. I think the people. I think they've got some people that know what they're doing on the writing staff, but they can't write dialogue for shit. Mm. They, they 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 still write I, it like I, it's I, a fucking soap opera and it's not I'm going to, I'm going to go back and just that. focus on the first episode and the characters in in the first episode because the first episode they turn up to some world where they think that they've developed warp drive and it turns around they haven't they've they developed a warp bomb um and then they link it back to discovery which made me go mm. which i'm like oh he's missing his sister no he's not missing his sister he's a vulcan yeah he's all his emotions are under lock and key and control um because that kind of well, that, 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 that wind me up and then the other bit too was the the alien that escapes the medical thing because you've got the new nurse chapel yeah and her hair is fucking terrible yeah and her hair is 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 ghastly i, I don't know what the f- fuck they were thinking it's oh, blonde God. not not <laughs> but and then it's like they didn't put any guards on on, on just by the doors of medbay oh it, Gareth, and then they... it, 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 it's still done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yes. still done. It, yes, don't, okay. Don't... It, it, it yeah, is right. done. It, it's not... Um... Yeah, it's like Bert Wilf has put down the, the, the oppression Olympics or the tragedy trials or whatever you want to call them. Um, it, it's... Yeah, uh, uh, it's... The thing with Spock, you, you mentioned Spock is meant to keep his emotions in check. Actually, strict. there is law for this. Spock in the cage was quite emotional. Yeah, but they never worked out what a character was in the cage. Well, yes, but they then built that into the canon by saying that a younger Spock 
hadn't decided to go through the colon arm because he was half human, he was still experiencing emotions. That is, and this is where I mean that they go back and they pick out these bits out of obscure canon. Um, but that is that is in there, and actually, it's again mentioned in the All first. Right, hang on a second. Oh, hold hold on a second. Right. So, yeah. so this chapel doesn't have blonde hair. She's got freaking platinum blonde white hair. Snakes. Yeah. You've, <laughs> you've got, and then you've got. And the security officer, who is tiny, she was in uh, Doctor Who. She was in the she episode was. where you found out where what River Who Song River Song was. was yeah, yeah. Um, and she plays the great granddaughter of Nunyan Sung. Yeah. Now I thought it was Nunyan Singh, as in I Indian, as well. because mm. I thought because Khan was Indian in the original mm. TV show, and I thought he was Indian, but they changed that around. Um, and having her as a granddaughter, just that, that, that was just stupid. It's mm -hmm. stupid. Double you day. could have had anyone else in there doing that role. You could create an entirely new character that you weren't dependent on uh, bastardizing Star Trek lore for that. Um, she, as an actress, she's okay. She's easy to watch. Nothing wrong with her there. It's quite believable. Um, didn't think she was being fake or di uh, disingenuous any, any time through it. Um, there was the bit where um, they they've got to uh, what's it? They're trying to get through the security, and they beam the contents of a liquid straight into Spock. Yeah, so how transporters work, mate. That's not how transporters work. You have they to. Beam it, they don't just beam it into him. They beam it into his fucking eye, don't they? Or is it into him like an injection? No, they beam it into him like an injection. That's not how it works. Yeah, it no, could no, have gone, I agree. That was that. That's dumb because all of a sudden they start breaking. Because transporters, if you remember what Enterprise, yeah, it, it, the older transporters, if you use them and say like you were in a leaf storm, yeah, there's a good chance those leaves would be attached to your fucking face on the way up, yeah, because you couldn't they couldn't distinguish between the two. They get better all the way through, yeah, but they were they were. Very precise instruments. That's why you had an operator there, because if anything went wrong, you'd want someone being able to fix it. Yeah, and I know in Discovery they were like, kind of, I can't be bothered to walk from one set to another. Do me. To oh yeah, 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 that was the yeah, that was that was done. Oh, Discovery is just yeah, but I, you've you've got her, you've got um, you've got the 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 sort of I don't know. Okay. Two episodes in, we haven't really learned a lot about the helmsman character. Who you mean the lesbian? She's a lesbian. Well, she's visibly she's a, lesbian. a lesbian, or, or she's non-binary. No, but they she's a fucking player, isn't it? No, no, she will be a lesbian. It's so like kind oh. of we need a lesbian, but yeah. she's not allowed to. You see, we're not going to characterize her too much, so we need a clear visual signifier that she's a lesbian. That's what they've done with the character. Um, it, it's gross. I find it a bit gross, actually. I think it's. Uh, Slightly. Uh, the the, the thing you... is, so far, because they haven't gone. Okay, they they they've given her. Let, let's face it, they've given her a dyke haircut. I'm sorry, but that's exactly yeah. what they've done, and 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 they've stereotyped it. But actually, so far as a character, I kind of like her. Yeah. Um And and that's the thing. I do I because they're I... not going. Because she's not going. Hi, I'm a lesbian. Every five seconds, they're Bill Potts. Um, mm. But. Um, because she's not saying hi, I'm a lesbian. Because that's what defines you. Um, I, I, I've enjoyed her character. Uh, you know what she's been on screen so far. I love number one so far, Re uh, Rebecca Romay. I, I, I the like latest her. lady. The, the, yeah, um, <laughs> I love Anson Mount. A Anson Mount is just so damn charismatic and is a perfect choice for a captain. And mm. and if this was written by anyone else, he would be one of the greats. He would be up there with Kirk and Picard. Yeah. He would be, um, because he 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 has that charisma that that Kirk had, and 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 I think that's why I'm giving it the time of day because I like Anson Mount, and that's the mm. problem. I like him as Christopher Pike, and and he has some great lines, and and although the dialogue. Is mostly poor. He does have some good lines. The problem is the ship's way too damn big. They've got these two, just it's like these cavernous sets. It's like 
He's living no, quarters. You, right, it's no, ridiculous. No, no, hang, on, hang on a second. There was one when you were sitting there going, oh, they're in a meeting room and it's huge. Oh, mm. But that was a meeting room on a space station where mm. they had giant things. No, that no, was on a space no, station. No, no, I've, the meeting I've room got in the station. Go, No, I know exactly what scene because there's one shot of it and it's taken from way back. That's on the spaceship because it's all white and red. That's on no, the No, it's on the space. It's on the space station. No, 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 no. I, I can even even find it's it. It's on one of the times. I've got it here. I'm looking at it with my You're talking towards the end. I'm yeah, talking towards the like, end. Near the be- no, it's near the beginning. Near the beginning. Near the beginning, <laughs> near the beginning of the episode. when uh, I think when they are first um, showing something on the heads-up screen, there's one shot where it's taken from the floor, a long way back from the table. It's like, how fucking big is that room? <laughs> it's huge. Um I think I think I can. Um... Can you give me a time code? Yeah, hang on. That's what I yeah. need because I'm looking at it at the moment, and it's like because there's the one yeah, on the space yeah. station where they were talking about it. And that's a reference to um, hang on, hang on. old uh, an old seventies film where they a guy was sent out into space yeah. with a load of things. It, it's about thirty minutes into the episode. It's not the beginning. No wonder I can't find it. Thirty minutes in. And there's a scene, yeah, right. So time codes, 3050, 3050. Pause it, 3050. Look at the fucking size of that room. That's a corridor, mate. No, 3050. I can share the screen. Share the screen then. Share me the screen because I've got 3050 and it's running down a corridor. There you go. Look at the size of that. I mean, just look at it. It's That's huge. fine. That's no, fine. it's not. It's not. That's and then fine. you look at the size of his damn quarters. It's like he's got a fucking fireplace in his quarters. On a okay, spaceship. Fireplace, a fireplace <laughs> on a spaceship might be fucking ridiculous. All right. Is it one of those fake ones? It must you know, be. Show. It might be. But, but, there was no chimney mate, on the fucking Enterprise last time I checked. Mate, it's so fucking ridiculously big. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Are you trying hey, to find that? Some people call it opulent. So the other thing, you, Keith, the other thing you need to know is that the um, the Enterprise D, only three percent of the entire Enterprise D was occupied. Yes, you know I know that, that but the, yes, but this is the, a Constitution three, class starship. It's a jolly sight, lot smaller. Um, but um, anyway, um, I, I think some of the sets are way too big. They they they, they are extraordinarily too large. But I do like the bridge set. I do like the engineering set, and I kind of like the the set for Medbay. Um, the Doctor character, I think, is going to be interesting. Um, uh, it's played by an actor that I quite like. I've seen in a few things. Um, so the Doctor, I think, is going to be quite interesting. Uh, who else? Have we mentioned all of the crew? And Uhuru, yeah, her Uhura. backstory might... Uhura, might, Uhura. Yeah. Uhura. 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 Um, her, her back story is a tragic one um doesn't know if she wants to oh, start no. yeah yeah, yeah. No, and, she's and supposed then to have spot... a really good one because her parents brought her up right and proper and allowed her to be the best she could be and then therefore she became the best she could be parent parents dead um because you know to be an interesting character you, you know you have to her have some kind still of be dead and that she'll have a good upbringing and whatnot oh samuel kirk lasts of all of about five seconds he not he's not red shirted um but he's a bit of a knob. <laughs> Um, okay. so they went and, the, and, that's the and other thing. Star but, patch. That was the other thing, too. Give me Lieutenant Kirk. And I'm like, oh, fuck, no, 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 no. And I it's saw his it father, went, no, it's his father, oh. not his brother. I thought it was his brother, his older brother, his father, which was, his father in, was called Sam because it's because an older brother, which is a reference to one of the episodes of uh, the original show. You might be right, but I thought it was his father. Now I'm not. I don't know that for a fact. I thought his dad was called Sam, but you could be right. I, I'm sure. And I know that you're obscure. You're you. You are a fucking for somebody that's not a Trekkie. You're a fucking encyclopedia when it comes to Trek. So, that's, I, 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 I won't. What's I won't like. argue. I won't when argue it, with you on that one. I'll be honest with you. When it works, it works. It's like the first two series series of the original show. I can remember more than I can the third. The third, for some reason, isn't in my head. Do you want to hear something? You want an interesting fact? Apparently, the guy who played Sulu, um, George Takei, only worked for thirty days on Star Trek: The Original Series. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know because fucking um, William Shatner shut him down. 
<laughs> because you only worked on the original thing for 30 days, sitting there thinking this, that, and the other. Um, yeah, well, he's he's become a bit... I don't know. Anyway, let's not go into George. Did, okay. Right, so... Going back to the show, um, the opening, it, you're right, it, it isn't dour, it's much more upbeat. I don't know how long that's going to stay because everyone's got a tragic backstory. Um, it's not family friendly, which Star Trek needs to kind of be if you want pop, broad spectrum appeal. Yeah, they, they talk about being inclusive, but if you have sex scenes and bits in it or allusion to sex well, in it, like they did, I, uh, you kind of didn't... take out the thing sitting down with the family and watching it. I don't know how much you could say that i mean she was only lying on a she was lying you know did we see down. her bum do we no no there's two there's two there there was there was the spock and the pike oh yeah, yeah there was, spock was getting it on with that that hot hot vulcan she was quite hot. yeah um <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah well i would i mean you know I, despite I her being a you know an emotional you know um or or, or emotionally stunted not, I'm not complaining. <laughs> okay, all right. It's, oh yeah, I find it. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, uh, I, I'll, I'll give it the four episode watch, and then I'll, I'll dip in or dip out. Yeah, I'll just endure with it to see if it happens. It didn't upset me. There was a thing that they did where they talked about the America's Second Civil War, and they showed. So bits from uh, January 6th or whatever it was. And I'm not, it's like, it makes me laugh because it was like fucking dorks invade a public building where you're allowed to go around. It, 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 th yeah, but that's what I mean about the fact that, that they contradicted Picard. Literally contradicted Picard. And both episodes oh, they don't give a shit about were shown on the same of... fucking day. Um, they don't but, give yeah. a shit about continuity of characters. Oh, I know. I know. I know this is my point, but anyway, um, what's right. next on the list? Elon Musk buys Twitter, and everybody goes mental, including well, the people at Twitter. He's he's announced over the weekend that he's put it on hold. So, yeah, do you know why he's put it on hold, though? Yes. Now, this is to do with the fact that 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 Twitter can't really, even though they provided this this arbitrary um, figure that less than 5% of the accounts on Twitter are fake accounts, they then decided to say, well, yeah, but we can't really be 100% sure about that. And the algorithm that we used to figure that out, we, had, we just pulled out of our asses. So we don't got, well, fucking get a decent algorithm going and tell me how many fucking fake accounts you've got. Um, so, yeah, is that not pretty much what it is in a nutshell? It's something along those lines, yeah. So it's like there's a... There's an audit tool. I'm just like, popped into it. I'm going to see what our, our Twitter looks like. So I'm just going to get a tweet. So yeah, there's an audit tool online where you can see if uh, if it's uh, fake or not. Um, let me see if I can share that. Uh, share screen. Where is screen? Tab. Twitter audit tool. So there's this audit tool online. Yeah. Now, when can you see it? Or have I not pressed the button? No, I've not pressed the button. That usually helps. Where is it? to me so you have like a twitter audit tool so you can check to see if you've got real followers or fake followers um there's rumors see what happened was but he bought it yeah and then all of a sudden a lot of people became unbanned all of a sudden all these people became unbanned and then all of a sudden a lot of other people started losing followers and bits and I think it's because there's a lot of fake accounts and that was the one thing he said he'd do is he would kill the spam bots on twitter yeah, that was his. That was his like his big goal: get rid of the spam bots, verify real people, get it profitable. Nothing wrong with that from a business perspective. So yeah, he's. Uh, I, I, I don't know why he's doing this. Um, purely from a really selfish point of view, I wish he'd just focus on SpaceX because that's where I think it's cool. Um, personally, I I I do not know how I to feel. I don't like Twitter. I don't care whether he's buying it or not. I'm still not going to use Twitter. Um, I don't think... I don't get this. I don't you get, don't get this. this. I don't know. I don't... I, I, I suspect there's some kind of ulterior motive, but I might be wrong. I just don't get it. I, I, I um, think it, 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 it falls down to one of two things. One, I think he likes Twitter. He loves tweeting. It's his, mm. it's his like hobby in between doing things. Mm. You check how many times, how many things, how many stories reported on him getting in trouble where he's tweeted something out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he tweets about freaking Dogecoin, yeah, and all of a sudden Dogecoin now has value, yeah, didn't before, mm. now it has value. He loves tweeting, that's his thing, he really does. So, why not? If he say, for example, he was, he, I think he was following the a, a, a site called the Babylon B, and the Babylon B put a video out of um, someone going to Twitter and complaining, and they go, Hang on a second, and they do this fake Rorschach test where it's like, kind of, what do you see? Nazis. Uh, what about there? Nazis. Nazis. Elon Musk promoting Nazis. And this, you just go through all these things, just go, Nazis, Nazis, Nazis. Yeah. And it's like, they're clearly not Nazis. And it's like, and they got banned for that. Okay. And then he turned around and said, we've been banned. I'll sort something out. And then literally, he's been thinking about buying it. Someone who does that, it's not, he's, I, I think, Part of his strategy now is to drive the price down so he gets a better deal. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's exactly what he's doing. I I have never since these banning started taking place, and and I I haven't clearly sol- sorted out my thoughts here, so I'm just spitballing this out a bit. All I can tell you is I'm uneasy with a company not being regulated or having any kind of editorial. Um. And and just banning people with it with it with it in it. Sometimes I understand why they are banned. I don't know if I agree with it or not. I I know that though it makes me uncomfortable that that private companies that have the level of influence that they do, and let's face it, Twitter, Facebook, social media does have these influences. It it concerns me that they effectively control the message um, and that there is no independent uh, editorial and, there. That, and that, that concerns that's, me. That's the other thing I think Elon Musk doesn't like. Yeah. And I think what yeah, he's doing is there's a guy called, do you know Tim Paul? Beanie. Roughly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Beanie fella. Um, he says, he goes, this is what he thinks has, has happened. Yeah. Twitter has been... Um, downplaying all the populist voices and it's ironic because populist people have lots of people following that's what they call populists um so they've been downplaying on the populist followers yeah and they've been artificially boosting the the marginalized voices or the ones that fit their their politics the problem is is that they look like they've been using fake bots fake accounts in order to do this and because they've been using fake bots and fake accounts to do this yeah they've got a, a, an influx of fake people on their site. So when they turned around to Elon and turned around and said, hey, 5% of our, our, our user base is fake uh, and we'll, you know, we'll do stuff about that. They've then gone back and looked at it and went, no. So how do you adjust that number? You remove as many fake ones as you can get away with and then you unban all those accounts that you banned and put them back on the platform. Because everyone was like kind of, the news was coming out that, Barack Obama has lost 30,000 people. Um, uh, Katy Perry lost 50,000 people. And then you've got people like Tucker Carlson and snarky 12-year-old Ben Shapiro. And all of a sudden, they've they've gone up. Yeah? He's a snarky... He looks like a snarky 12-year-old. Sorry, it's his genetics. He's I'm not, unlucky. I am laughing no? at it because I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I know. It's just, I just I always just find it funny because it's... It, it, he will never escape that. He'll be he'll be grey, and he'll, I'll still look at him as a snarky twelve year old. Um, but all these people, the populists or the people with libertarian and conservative leanings, all of a sudden massive boost. All the people that are on their side, sh- massive decrease. And then but then it's... you hear people like the the, the Gary Beeklers and the the Ashes of the world turn around and say, "Hey, I've been having great fun on Twitter because all of a sudden I'm not scared of being banned." And it's like something's up there. They've like they they have done something, yeah. I think they've done something. Well, I think they've done something illegal. I I probably I I honestly just don't care enough. As I said, my interest in Elon Musk is what he's doing at SpaceX, which I think is seriously cool. Um, and I wish the fucking um FDA or whatever they are would get on and fucking approve or unapprove instead of delay. Talk about one of the worst run USA agencies ever. How many times have they delayed that goddamn permit in Texas? I mean, that damn thing should have taken off by now. The fucking hell, they stacked it eight months ago. Um, and uh, and they've been delaying it every month, I think, because they delayed it again. I think it was like the sixth time. Everybody just, you know, this is where Twitter does actually have a thing because most people just went, 
what the fuck? Are you being bu- run by a bunch of incompetent morons? You keep saying, oh, it'll be done next month. Then you delay it another month. There's no fucking COVID pandemic anymore, per, per, per se. You can't say, oh, we're, everybody's at home or, you know, off because of COVID, because the figures don't agree with that. Hurry up and goddamn approve it, please, because I want that damn thing to take off. <laughs> That's what I'm interested in. Because to me, that is that that is something that, well, you know, um, so um, I want to see that damn rocket go. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Um, well, so we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. But it's as I said, the the the, the they've been firing executives left, right, and centre. There was one poor bastard who went yeah, on saw. paternity leave and then got fired on the way back. Uh, and the amount well, of money these people was he the fired of money... or did he said no, he, he was quit? Fired. He was fired. No, he yeah. was fired. He was fired. I do um, know that one. The, the amount of executives and the pay that they're receiving for managing a failing company. Yeah, because they don't make any money. If they were making money, you'd expect it. Yeah. Now, sounds weird. Activision, I'll use Activision as an example. Yeah. Activision makes money. They've never not made money. Yeah. And they pay themselves ridiculous bonuses. Disney, at one point, were making themselves money and paying themselves ridiculous bonuses. Twitter never has never made any money. I think there might be, maybe it's a quarter where they've declared that they've made money and then it got swallowed up in the next month's result, the next quarter's results. So why are you paying these people 16, 17 million pounds? This is this is this is stupid. So I'm, I'm glad that he's going to take a scythe to these people and their pay because that needs to happen. There's nothing more irritating than rewarding I, failure. I definitely think the the social media companies need uh, do need an upheaval. But I, I I still, as I said, I don't know how I feel about social media. I mean, I, I don't know enough about Twitter these days. I mean, Nigel probably knows more about Twitter than I bloody do because you know. He's still stuck in that closet, so he hasn't got me all the followers yet. Um, so, um, <laughs> that's a joke from five years ago. Um, yeah, I barely <laughs> use Twitter. To be fair, I don't. I, 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 I pop on Twitter every so often. There's a guy I follow called Data Racer, and all he does is he takes screenshots of people doing nefarious things, uh, and he's actually a really good source of information to find horrible people in the world. Um, like there's like tw- tweets of J.K. Rowling getting death threats and all these other people getting death threats, and they talk about the safety of other people, but they ignore the ones that are politically inconvenient for them. Um, and that's one thing that Elon Musk will end. Um, and I think that there are governments around the world may have done some dodgy things. If the if the former president of the United States is not on Twitter, but uh, the leaders of the Taliban and some ISIS people are on Twitter. Something's not quite right. Seriously, mm. something's not quite right. Well, Elon um, said about that, he was saying, yes, I'd unban Trump because yep. um, that way we can moderate what he's saying, essentially. Well, no, no, he's no, he doesn't want to, no, he doesn't want to moderate what he's saying. Yeah, doesn't want to do it. He's what he's free saying. Yeah. If, if he's on his own platform, he can say whatever he likes, however he likes, with no repercussion whatsoever. When, yeah, when but if he was platform. on if he was on Twitter, if he was on in on Twitter under Elon Musk, it'd be the same. When that platform's yeah. working, Mike. When that platform's working, but he he he's no come clue. out and said that he he he's saying he has no interest in coming back to Twitter. I'll bl- if Elon Musk does buy Twitter and unbans him, and. Trump does, without going down too political a thing, and does decide to run again. I give it about five minutes before he's back on Twitter, to be honest. But that's another. Yeah, that's after a, he announces that's another he runs, five minutes. Yeah. After he announces he runs, five minutes later, he'll be on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, um, but no, I, again, I don't know how I feel about this, really. I, 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 I barely ha- have shared much in the, much interest in it. Purely, I'm only just like, why are you buying it? As you said, Gareth, it doesn't make any money, sir, and you're paying 44 billion for it. Why? Um, that's, I think that's... he believes he can. I think he believes he can get it to make money. It's his toy. Yeah. That's what it is. That's he, he's, it, that's the perceived thing. It's his toy. He can buy it and get it working. He looks at that and goes, "I could do a better job of running that." And went, "Hang on a second, let me but... just check down my sofa for loose change. I will. I've got enough money to buy it. Woohoo!" Elon yeah. Musk is one of, one, of the, one, of, one of the more sort of bright, intelligent billionaires out there. He's certainly one of the most interesting. Yes, he's quite conservative. 
probably don't agree with half his politics, but that doesn't matter. He's an interesting guy. Um, and, I mean, you just have to watch that everyday astronaut tour of um, SpaceX in, in Texas, and he interviews, he, he's shown around by Elon Musk. And the level of detail Musk goes into about these fucking engines, you're just like, shit, he really understands this shit. I mean, this guy understands rocket science, and that's no fucking word of a lie. Um, and uh, you sit there and go, fuck me. I mean, among I, he's a billionaire and a fucking rocket scientist. <laughs> so it, 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 it's kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, but as I said, I'm more interested in this space stuff. Anyway. Anyone let's else move on. To, let's 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 um let's move on to poor choice. I call this section poor choices in life. All right. Um. So we'll go for the first poor choice in life. Okay. So this is uh this is someone. I'm going to turn the volume off on this. this someone decides to uh rush J- Dave Chappelle at one of his comedy gigs. So it's, a, it's I blame Will Smith. I actually genuinely blame Will Smith for this. Yeah. So he rushes him, and then security comes in. I love it because it's fucking like a comedy <laughs> act. There, you, <laughs> you can't <laughs> tell if it's made up or not. But literally, they they went round back, yeah, and they beat the ever loving crap out of this guy to the point that they broke his arm, where it looks like a Lego man with his arm stuck on back to front when they were wheeling him out in his stretcher. Let's see if I can. So I'm trying not to. Uh, Copyright it, and there was some some other bits. Didn't Chris Rock come on? Chris Rock. Comes Chris on Rock the came on, and the and do you know what he said? Oh, was that Will Smith? <laughs> <laughs> was that Will Smith? Um, it's I. It's it's a worrying state of affair. Yeah, because comedians have always known to be offensive. Always offensive. Yep. You can't you can't talk to a thousand people without offending one of them. It's a fact. It doesn't matter what you're saying. You could just be saying kumbaya, the hands, you know, tree hugging hippie shit that we used to get, which I miss. Um, I I have yeah. I have very much in the last few years stayed away from saying, commenting, or talking about anything political on social media, right? But I broke my rule once. And it was about Dave Chappelle. And because I was really very, 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 very angry about this. And it perfectly fucking demonstrates what what's wrong. And without going down to the political all sides, I'm not going to bore you, Nigel. Um, but this is, this is, there was this big hoo-ha about his last comedy special. Because he talks, because the trans people got all leery about the fact that Dave Chappelle is anti-trans. He's not. He 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 insults everyone. He just makes anti-trans jokes. But if you actually watch the last fifteen minutes of Dave Chappelle's special, you understand why he antagonizes these people, um, and he does it on purpose. And it, and and it is for anger because he talks about having a friend who was a transvestite, who was a trans or trans transgender, sexual, right? Yeah. Um, and they became very good friends. And he took the piss out of it, and he didn't understand everything, and he was honest in the fact that he was felt uncomfortable about this. But he said, look, we were friends. And because this, this the, the person in question came out and said, I'm friends with Dave Chappelle, leave him alone. Actually, he's a nice guy. These anti-trans people, these same three or four people that were protesting at Netflix, hounded this, this person into the grave, to the point that this person killed themselves, right? None of that was in any of the news stories. But when you watch it and you see the emotion on Chappelle's face, you're like, Jesus Christ. And I I said, look, for all these people that are fucking criticizing Dave Chappelle, go and watch the last fucking 15 minutes of this special and you will understand because no one in the media is telling you this. No one has featured this which is the context of why Chappelle says what he does right it is it is the reason that he doesn't like these people and I don't fucking blame him (laughs) and I tweeted this I said look this guy and actually he ends it with a brilliantly funny joke um 
um, where, where he, because what Dave Chappelle did was he, he gave the daughter of this person a lot of money. He set her up for life, basically. And he goes, um, he goes, your mother was the best man I knew. <laughs> and he finishes that joke on it. And it's brilliantly funny. The, the thing is, Chappelle is a brilliantly funny comedian. And um, he he is very very controversial. Some of his Michael Jackson jokes make Freddie Boyle uh, Boyle look um what's his face Frankie um, Boyle Scottish, Frankie, Frankie, Frankie Boyle, Boyle yeah. look look tame. Some of the stuff in his previous special, but if you've never seen a Dave Chappelle special, they're all on Netflix. Go and watch them. Brilliantly funny, very very funny. Um, but uh, the fact that he got attacked on stage. <laughs> Can you see the guy's arm? Yes, Jesus Christ! Yeah, well, he kind of deserved it. Yeah, he fucking did. It's the stupidity of people. It's uh, I find it immensely annoying. They feel they can do stuff without consequence. Yes, there are, there are consequences for your actions in life. I yes. wonder if if there was uh, how can I put it um, something promoting that, shall we say, some social media platform. They might be angry that this social media platform now is no longer under that will no longer be under their control, um, and people won't get bleeding <laughs> editorialized. Anyway, he wasn't the only stupid person to do something stupid. Um, where is it? That's hang on a second. I just need to find the footage. Oh, crikey, there it is. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. So let's start that. There. Is this some so, dude on it? Oh yeah, yeah. Was... <laughs> he decided to pick on Mike. Fucking Tyson. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I don't sound rude or anything. Mike, Mike Tyson, even at his current age, could beat the shit out of most people. And he's got the temperament to go along with it. Um, but I, I, this is it. This is it. Right, see, so this is it, right? So you've got Mike Tyson. He's sitting quite happily in his seat, waiting wait to take off. And this this idiot here what is are goading idiot? him and trying to wind him up. He's antagonising him. At what point? Okay, right. For it to get to that point, <laughs> just leave that up there to make us feel better. Okay. Right. You see a guy leaning over somebody else's seat who are clearly not together. And what are the stewardesses and the stewards doing? They're called. Cool. Why are they? Why have they not they, gone they, up to this guy and gone? They called. They called call security, Nige, and they got him kicked off the plane. Well, you yeah, could clearly so go up to him and just say, right, stop. And it's then Mike if he carries Tyson. on... I'll be honest with you. It's Mike fucking Tyson. If Mike Tyson can't defend himself, I don't know who can. <laughs> it's not about defending himself, right? He could do it to anybody. Yeah, yeah. I know he could, Nigel, but... And the, people the, wouldn't. The, the and the people who work there would be And the stewardesses all. are not there to put themselves in the harm's way when it comes to these sort of things. No. They have to find the authorities the, and have to wait for the authorities but to on the, I see, I've been on a plane where we were forced to land... I'll never forget this. I'll tell this story, right? So my first time I ever came to Thailand, we were flying an airline that, that's now defunct. Um, and uh, they it was a direct flight here, and it was meant to be a direct flight back. But uh, some kid, looked a bit like that actually, got on the plane and got all pissed up and started giving all the fucking passengers shit, right? I mean, he was a very little fucker. Um, drunk, rude, and I remember the air staff trying to control him. And and they were, in fairness, trying to control him. But, you know, there's all these little Thai air hostesses and this pissed up six-foot-tall twat. Um, and in the end, they, 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 they couldn't do a lot because he started threatening them with violence. So we landed. Now, unfortunately for this guy, we landed in the United Arab Emirates. Um, and this guy got on the plane, and I'm not fucking joking. And this isn't right. Don't don't, don't take offence from this. This guy gets on. He's wearing black sunglasses, great big black tash, fucking green beret, green uniform. <laughs> right now, from a distance, <laughs> this guy looked like fucking Saddam Hussein. Right? I'm not joking. This guy did. He was like fucking. Um, and he got arrested and carted off the fucking plane. Um. In the United Arab Emirates. So, um, yeah, not a nice place to get arrested. Um, but 
they, the air hostess stuff, they couldn't do a lot. This guy was threatening them. And I mean, you know, they're not paid mm. enough money to put their lives at risk. This guy, I, I saw the video. This guy was fucking, I, I mean, in fairness, Tyson didn't just get up and punch him. This guy was going at him for about five or six minutes. And Tyson yeah. did say, look, look, fuck off, basically. And this guy carried on. He's like, right, fucking twatted him. In fairness, I possibly would have done the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. It's, I don't. I don't get where these people get off and doing what they do to antagonise people. It, were they some kind of fucking YouTubers or something that that, that, that do this professionally? Oh, there might have been some YouTuber slash Instagram person, but it doesn't matter because you you, you don't start a fight with Mike. Any idiot starts a fight, fucking Mike Tyson. He's known for being a bit sorry. Nuts. Okay, what, Mike Tyson? What with, with your face tattoo? Ear. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, if you, he obviously knew who Mike was to do what he did, and so you would know his rep. And his rep is he's a little bit nuts, especially yeah. in front of cameras in a ring. So, what yeah, makes you true. think he would do it any less to somebody on a plane who's antagonizing it, it, him? He's like walking up to a line and poking it with a fucking stick. And then wondering why your arm gets bitten off. <laughs> Not only that, poking it with a stick while holding some meat behind you at arm's length. Yeah. Going, Come on then. <laughs> kitty, kitty. Right. Um. Right. Here's, here's, here's the funny thing for the story, yeah? The guy, eventually the, 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 the airport security comes along, they remove the guy. Mike Tyson, no repercussions whatsoever. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. It feels like justice was served that day. Well, yeah, they, yeah, they, I, they, I they argued that. it was self-defense, and it was. I mean, I, I, I have said hello to Mike Tyson. That's all. That's all I can say about Mike Tyson. He was at, um, he was at the same conference, uh, com uh, uh, co like a Comic Con thing in London that Matt Smith was at, and he walked past me with a load of guys. And I went, all right. He went, mm. I didn't say anything. He just went, I know, he's, he's nice. Do you know what? I feel um, if you do see a celebrity in passing, that is the correct thing to do. You're right. right. And then let them do whatever they were doing. Yeah. You get in there. Yeah. I, I don't agree with this whole getting in a celebrity's face to have a proper conversation unless they want to engage with you. If you go, all right. And they go, all right. And then they walk over to you. And you go, oh, cool. You know, mm. you want to have a chat. If they I, don't, I, let them do what they want to do. I, I met Frank Bruno. He's a funny guy. Really, really, really nice guy, actually. Did you mean Chris Bruno. Eubank? Not I Chris have Eubank. met Chris Eubank. Um, Chris, no, I, I, no, was... not Chris. It's Chris, Chris. Eubank. Oh, oh, my, 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 my name is Chris Eubank. It. I am a boxer. Um, I, I met Chris Eubank a few years after that episode of, what was the sporting show called? What was the, the, the sporting thing with Nick Hancock? Uh, they think it's all over. Yeah, right. So there was this episode that they think it's all over and they had Chris Eubank on there and they fucking set him up. Right. <laughs> they they set him up. And he and he was being very Chris Eubank like he was let me tell you something educational. Right. And he kept going off on one. And then they brought up the, that somehow they got onto the fucking topic of Jonah Lumo, right? And Chris Eubank sits there, he goes, Personally, I think I think Jonah Lumo is a big puff. Like <laughs> and then Nick Hancock goes, Whoa, 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 whoa. What did you just say, Chris? Did you just say Jonah Lumo is a big puff? Yes, I think he's a big puff. Ten minutes later, they have the, you know, feel the sportsman rap. Yeah. And Nick Hancock just goes, and now it's time for feel the sportsman rap. And just smiles and looks at Chris Eubank like this. And fucking Jonah Lumo walks out. He's got Chris Eubank. Now, Chris Eubank's quite a big guy. I've stood next to him. He's a fucking big... Jonah Lumo is seven fucking foot tall, big Maori motherfucker, right? Yeah, and he's, he's a big. big bastard. I have seen him. I, I've got his autograph somewhere. I, I've I sort of got close to him to get his autograph. He is a big man. Eubank shat himself, and you can see it on his face. Lumo just walked up to him and you up? <laughs> <laughs> and Francis my friend, fight, he says, <laughs> we we were in Brighton. We saw Chris Eubank. My mate went, "All right, Chris." And he was like, oh, no. "He goes, how's your mate Jonah?" <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> we watch, and, um, in fairness, Eubank laughed. In fact, we, we watch um, 
Gogglebox on a Friday, and some and when you watch the celebrity one, he's on it with his son Chris, yeah. Chris Eubank yeah. Junior, of course, because you know he's a boxer too, and I've seen him box. He's a boxer too, and he's an absolute mm. beast. However, uh, pff, such imagination with the name, though, calling him his son the same name as himself. Um, and the the thing is, Chris Eubank, normal, is so eccentric. His son is oh, yeah. sitting there looking at him, going, "What the fuck?" Half the time, it's so good. Oh, he was so in the suit. Good. He was he in his. When in we saw suit. him in Brighton, in Brighton, he was in one of the a tweed fucking beige suit with a fucking cane. Oh, I, I, I love him. I don't get me wrong. I, he's eccentric, but he's not eccentric in a bad way. He is Chris Eubank. <laughs> I mean, oh mate, he's so lovable. Yeah, he is. He's one I mean, of those ex- a, lovable eccentrics. He's a bit like he's a bit like Bruno because, I mean, we used when I was a kid we used to go to pantomimes because my mum ran a shop in Molesy where all the theatre lot used to come in, and mum one of mum's customers was a big director and would direct pantomimes every year, so we would go to the pantomimes at Richmond every year, and one year. Bruno was there and they were, you know, how they get kids to come up on stage. Well, my sister was chosen and I wasn't, and I got really upset. I was only about eight or nine at the time. And they said, all right, look, you come and you come and meet Frank Bruno. So why my sister's on stage and you've got, I think it was Brian Colony. Remember the, um, the guy from ITV? It's a oh, puppet. Uh, it's yeah. a puppet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so he yeah. was ripping the piss out of my sister. Frank Bruno was looking after me back there. So he goes, oh, what are you doing, mate? Uh, like that. Lovely what? fucking He's... guy. I've never forgotten it because yeah. he was he was he was like he was like sort of what do you think the Panama? This is cool, isn't it? You know? does, yeah, he's he was, like a real yeah. Loved it. Loved him. Really nice guy. And I know I, he genuinely looked after me. He just took me by the hand. It's like we we sneaked up to the backstage and we could see through the curtain and everything. And it was like it was brilliant. I can't remember. I think it was Dick. It was Dick Whittington. That was probably that is was he. Uh, I think uh, Connolly did Dick Whittington for quite a long time. <laughs> mm. It was Dick Whittington, if I remember rightly. Because was it was it was Brian Colony, Sue Pot, Sue fucking Pollard was in it, and Frank oh. Bruno. Oh, from um, is it Heidi? Or was Heidi? it Aladdin? So Sue Pollard was Heidi High, yeah. I, yeah. She was in. Yeah. She was in one year. My, I might be getting. Could have been Aladdin because Bruno might have been. The anyway, team. on I this week's theatre review with King. <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> just uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. We digress. So, <laughs> so look, the long and short of it is if we've reached the conclusion that you do not start a fight with Mike Tyson, full stop. Evander Holyfield will back me up on this, I guarantee you. <sighs> He's all ears, that man. He's all ears. <laughs> well, half. No, another note. Right. Uh, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Um, another note. Um, Batwoman, the <laughs> fucking atrocious CW show. <sighs> Has been cancelled along. Didn't with... Naomi? Didn't that t- terrible Naomi, Naomi got cancelled? Legends of Tomorrow got cancelled. I think everything but The Flash and Lois and Clark, or sorry, not Lois and Clark, Superman and Lois, uh, got cancelled because at the moment there is a bloodbath at Warner Brothers. This guy Dave, David Zaslav has come in and gone. Why are we wasting money on this? Gone. It's and the other part of it too is also that they have a studio lease and the studio lease is uh, coming up, <laughs> so they're having to like kind of. I think it, it, it may the studio needs to be re, rehired, and they were like, "Let's oh, save money. Let's not do any more of this shit." Um, this guy the, from Discovery looks like he's going through there with a nice pair of scissors, shaping everything up to the way it should be. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it sounds like a man who's like, "We need to make money, and we need and to get return on the fact that we bought you." Um, which is good. Um, there are a lot of uh, people in there. Maybe they'll fire a ton of executives because I'm tired of seeing more executives than actors at the beginning of a TV show. I remember when you used to watch TV show and you used to get three sets of executive producers and they go like this. There would be the money men executive producers, the guys holding the purse strings, usually from Warner Brothers, but large. Um, or there would be the, uh, and then there'd be the creative. Yeah. So the day Michael Skolinski's Michael Pillar, etc. Those people will be next. And then there would be the person who's actually doing the executive producing job and responsible for making sure that all parties are that. There's three groups of producers and you most maybe get nine at max. But now 
you can go through there and they have got more screen they've got more bloody things on the on the titles than anything else it's like if you watch discovery there are more there's like 23 i think there's 23 i was watching red letter media thing they're kind of 23 executive producers so this guy whoosh, coming through canceling all this stuff naomi i watched a, a clip of um the last scene naomi when she remembers she can fly and uh it looked terrible, and the actress looked like she couldn't be bothered. Was the other oh, thing too? It, I, it, them had it on in the background on the Warner Brothers travel here for about five minutes, and I just went. I looked at it and already knew it was just utter crap. Um, the rumor is that, that that they are looking at the JJ deal, and the rumor is that all the movies that he was supposedly meant to be working on, like Black Superman and all this bullshit, um, have been quietly. He hasn't, right? He had the deal. He's done nothing. He should have done one film by now. Just one film that's because by now. This, that's because this happened, and the rumour is that they are... Why the fuck give him half a billion dollars? I, I'm not joking. I'm, they haven't... Even with the deal going... Hang on. No, no. They half It was $500 million yes. that the, the, the contract was for, yeah? He should have produced... If I wanted that, that's five films. I'd want five films from him by now. Yeah? <sighs> Nothing. The man's a That's... fucking hack. I hate him. I really oh, no, do. I know, I know, I know. He He's like the I, reverse uh... Midas. Everything he touches turns to shit. I um... used to disagree with you, but I now very much agree with you. Um, and, yeah, now... Do you still like Star Trek Beyond? <sighs> See, that's the one we argue over. You like Star Trek Beyond? Because I don't fucking like Star Trek Beyond. I thought Star Trek Beyond was... I know. I've always said that I know why you don't like it. My problem is I like Chris Pine. And I think that's why I I like... No. I like Chris Pine. I think that's a good Mm. good choice in acting. He does do... It does a good... There are moments in the film... There are moments in the film I like. You see, the thing was, like... I know not everybody agrees with me, but I thought the, the, the casting of the central trio, the triangle in those movies, was... Absolutely spot on, right? That you know that the, the Carl Urban, Zachary Quinto, and and Chris Pine. They didn't the use. They, they didn't. It wasn't. They weren't the main trilogy. It was. No, but they Uhura. were the triangle. They were the they triangle. Were, the, the main. The main. They were in the yeah, original they series. They weren't yeah. in the original no, series. No, but, but not in this. It was. Yes, I'm, I'm, I know that. But I like I'm using those. I, 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 I won't say no. Those three, those three were were were, were brilliantly cast, um, and that's why I suppose I like parts of that movie. Um, I won't say it was good; it's not particularly good. Um, you know, what's his face as the bad guy is tragically underused. Um, Lufa. That's the right. Hang on a second. Right in the first Star Trek, that new the, the reboot, yeah. You don't know how dumb his his introduction is. Hi, I'm Nero. And it's like, what the fuck kind of intro is that? Do you think Darth Vader would have worked? That would have worked with Darth Vader, where it would have been like kind of we're chasing down this thingy, and he just calls him up on the video phone. And he's like, kind of, hello, is Darth Vader here. Um, <laughs> I have the penny. I believe Squire. The way you've just done that voice reminds me of the Eddie Izzard Death Cantina sketch. <laughs> I, I'm I'm Vader, Lord Vader. Do you know who I am? <laughs> Have you ever no, seen that no, sketch? No. Look up Eddie Izzard Death Star Cantina sketch. It you will piss yourself laughing. <laughs> you will absolutely but, piss uh, yourself laughing. But the other thing was was the uh, yeah because it was his introduction as a bad guy is just terrible. It really is, uh, and I, I, I didn't like the Star Trek 2009 one because it wasn't Star Trek, and and I'll be honest with you, that one has led to Discovery, and to Picard, and all the other nonsense because they've just diverged off. What they should I have, think... they should have got the guy from Babylon Five to to write Star Trek. They should have just paid him to do it. He he can he can write. He, he did Sense Eight. He managed to make a really. What I would put describe one of the difficult, difficult TV series to write, make it work. He made it work um, because you know that you know decent writing. You can't, you don't know what to do directing wise, this, that, and the other. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, going going back to uh, Warner Brothers and bits. Uh, I'm hoping that Warner Brothers will get a, a steady head on. They they have talked about cancelling the uh, the Black Superman because it just seems pointless. 
Um, they, I, I, I'm, uh, Bill, I'm, I'm praying that the um, the Babylon Five thing's actually been cancelled. I was watching it. To, I was watching it Thursday night. Um, it was put on hold because of this. Um, mm. Not it, no yet. It hasn't yet been cancelled. Now, yeah. I, 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 <sighs> I'm a bit. I'll be honest with you. If it gets made now under the current conditions with the new guy who doesn't want this shit, he wants stuff to sell, he wants stuff to make money. I think I'd be in a better place. I, 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 I'm, I was half intrigued to see it because JMS was involved. That's why. But I also understood at the time it was being made for the CW, and you know, mo- all but one show on the CW has been woke nonsense, but. The first season of Superman, Superman and Lois was pretty good. This season has been quite interesting um, where it's going. So we've had Bizarro. So, um, and that's been been interesting. He's just revealed his identity to Lana and that's where it left off. So um, we will have to see. We will have to see. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with DC because DC have really got a moment now that they could strike and do very well because Marvel and have is opp- very much floundering. All right, let's let's just do let's just a couple of things now and, and wrap things up. Okay, so the first things first is I spoke to my sister about Doctor Strange. She really enjoyed it. Um, her husband, on the other hand, didn't enjoy it. He thought it was garbage. And he said, at the end of the film, people were actually booing the screen because they thought it was that bad. Um, it sounds very... Uh, and then and then, um, Rise of Skywalker storytelling. I think that... Um, what do you call it? I think that they have a, a problem, and the problem is Kevin Feige. I think that he thinks that he is the secret source rather than he was fortunate to be around people who create the secret source. Yeah. I think he thinks it was all his idea. Yeah. It wasn't his idea. He's not the creative. Yeah. Um, Bill Fitz says he walked out of Dr. Cringe. Wow. Mm. Was it that bad? Mm -hmm. That is, that's, that's not a ringing endorsement. I haven't seen it. I went to go and see it. I I found Wanda to be highly annoying. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, totally out of character. I'm sorry, I just do not buy her motivation. I'm sorry, but it's it's bad. It's really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm fed up of seeing Professor X die on screen. I'm sorry, I'm just fed up of it. It's what three times now. You you yeah. you, you finally introduced John Skinsky as as Richard. Um, what's his face in the Fantastic Foot Four? And then you promptly kill him. Um, the only one that was good to see getting killed was Natasha Lynch. Only because I find her immensely irritating. Oh yeah, um, she's got she's, she's anti-screen presence. I have um, to admit that okay. the Hayley Atwell Captain Britain in this, well, she was hot, but then Hayley Atwell is. She didn't look like a man. She didn't look like a man, like the cartoon. Yeah. Um, no, most of it right. was visually. It's great. It was that bad. It's it's annoying because there were. As I said, there were three films in Phase 4 that I was looking forward to, and that was the Spider-Man film, because it's Spider-Man, the chance of it being crap, or unlikely, it's like a Batman film. Um, there was the, the Multiverse of Madness, which I was looking forward to, and then there's the Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 3. And they're the ones, only ones. And I don't think Disney has anything else slated outside of those films that I'm interested in. The, yeah? the only thing, thing I'll say is, Bifford, did you start day to the point where, where he fights Wanda? Because I will say that the bit where he basically uses a zombified version of himself to fight Wanda, I haven't seen like a, a zombified Doctor Strange fighting Wanda. That was that that one bit in the entire film was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but but it's a bad film and it doesn't excuse the entire film. Um, but. Um, that was only because I'm into Marvel zombies. <laughs> I'm fucking. Oh, I'm going to use a zombie. <laughs> and it, it was it very. Um, what do you call it? It was very. The guy who's the guy direct Sam Raimi. Three Sam Raimi yeah. to have like kind of half uh, dead characters. I love Bruce Campbell turning up. As I said last week, I loved Bruce Campbell turning up, and and the Bruce Campbell 
cameo was very, very funny, like he is in all of, of Raimi's movies. But the fact that they did that kind of <laughs> really funny end scene uh, after the credits <laughs> was was also very apt. Well, even though it's like five seconds long, <laughs> it's very funny. I started laughing. Um, okay, but yeah. So his right. So here's the upsetting thing from following from last week: the new Doctor from Doctor Who. And Russell T. Davis, it looks like we're going down the path that we didn't want to go down. Russell T. Davis <sighs> go, went on about um, being anti-Tory and, and he got all political. Um, yeah, but he's been political. Then... He has been political. I right. Can I just remind you that that, that that Russell T. Davis, is he's done some fucking howling horrible things in, in Doctor Who. Yeah, yes. and one of the most popular episodes of Doctor Who has probably got one of the most irritating things in it too, and it's called Voyage of the Damned. Yeah, you've watched that, and, and he tried That's to. That's the one when he, when he was on the bus. Can't you think? No, not the bus. The no. Voyage of the Damned. No, that's that's Planet of Dead. Voyage oh, of the was this the one with Carly Minogue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, what do you call it? He he equated being cybernetic to being gay. Yeah. And it was really because when you saw it, and it was the little fucking red potato creature, not cactus potato creature. Yeah, that was cringeworthy. And there have been the bits only, in it private prior. The only thing that I will script. say, I I know what he said, and and I've I've heard the interviews, but there is one thing that gives me a, a tiny bit of hope, and it's only a tiny bit of hope. Bad Wolf is owned by Sony. Sony want to make money. If they go too into the, the they 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 have taken this on, knowing how bad the ratings are. There are Sony execs that have said, "We know how bad the ratings are. It is absolutely dead in the U.S. Right, and it's dead for a very good reason because it's been shit and, and crap. Right. They are hoping." That, that that he will go into the side of actually telling stories. When Russell T. Davis wants to tell a story, he can do that. He can tell it, even when he gets political, he can tell a good story around it. Years and Years was 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 a good story around something very political. Now, you might not agree with the politics, and it was very, very obviously anti-Trump, right? And, and you might have been switched off by that, but the writing was at least good, right? I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt until it airs. And I will give it one or two, maybe the four episode rule. If it, if it, if it, if, but they, they, they have to undo the, what's it face? The time was gone. If, if been they undone. don't do that, then I'm, I'm, I'm done because so far as I am concerned, the doctor is for Gallifrey. They, they're I don't going care. to bury it under the carpet and ignore it. That's what they're going to do. They haven't even. They haven't. The thing that gets me with the current Doctor Who is, yeah, they haven't. How can I put it? Um, the universe got destroyed with the exception of the solar system. And they haven't fixed it. And, and they, they haven't, haven't fixed, fixed it. it. They didn't even bother. It wasn't even like I hand wave it and it comes back. Yeah, nonsense. Which is fine. They no, sex machina, that, but do something. Sonic it back. Yeah. Oh, everything's back. You know. Um, I'm. I, I, I. This is how it goes. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fucking disaster. I think you're going to have bits of where you go, oh, this is really good, and then other bits where you go, what the fuck is this? I think the Doctor's going to be a they-them. Yeah. All right. It's going to be non-binary uh, crap nonsense. And you will be, at the end of this, you'll go, Stephen Moffat was the better writer. And I put fucking money on that. Because it's exactly the same. It's going to be exactly the same as the, you'll be begging for the, I, uh, George Lucas I, at the end of it. I always felt that... that, that... That the best episodes in Russell T. Davis's tenure were written by Moffat. When Moffat took over, the best episodes that Moffat wrote were under Russell T. Davis's tenure. Um, no, no, so, I, 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 uh, we can argue with we the exception of Dr. one. Newell. With the exception of one episode, and I know, and and I will give you that right, and that's the war speech. That? The war speech with the, the, the Zygon inversion is a good one, but there's yeah. the the heaven sent. That's just that's a great what do you call it? Um, it's a, it? it depends uh, what you it depends think. what you 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 take from Doctor Who as a piece of brave 
very well written television. Yes, Heaven Sent is a good episode. I didn't enjoy it that much. I get why people did. I it's not my favorite. It's, if I, I, I still I, love Blink, it's Blink it's a to me is still one of the best pieces of science fiction on its own. I'll give you that. It's just a fantastic. It, it's brilliantly piece written. Of science fiction. It, it was a brave episode to do it, and 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 it is one of those thinking. But my favorite episodes are not that. My favorite episode. I still love from season one with the. The, the, where they introduce Captain Jack, Are You My Mummy? I think those are two really very good episodes. And I love Blink. Blink is the episode that I say, look, if you want to know what Doctor Who, go watch Blink, because Blink will scare the shit out of you. And it does. And do, and, and do it know still what fucking does. My favourite um, Doctor Who thing is. Go on. What's it's that? not even Doctor Who, it's Torchwood. <laughs> Well, no, look, some people... Yeah, but that was Russell T. Davis. Yeah. Torchwood was Russell T. Davis. And, no, and no, my no, first... no, that was Chris Chibnall, mate. He created it and Chris Chibnall ran it. My my Sorry. first entry to Doctor Who was Torchwood, and I didn't even realise it was uh, Doctor Who. Hmm. We just caught an episode and went, ooh, quite like the look of that. It was the first episode, you know, where the... I forget the, the detective's name, but she started following Jack and finds his secret lair and monster. stuff no clue um but we we were we caught the first episode and was like oh that's quite good and then on speaking with you found out actually it's a spin-off of doctor who and we're like oh right okay it's an anagram of doctor who if you, yeah if you we didn't even anagram. realize um such is my lack of knowledge of all things doctor who and my well, lack of caring, really. Um, the, the only the, doctor I've liked was Matt Smith, and that was the first one I got into when it was regenerated. Have you ever seen the, the first episode with the Weeping Weeping Angels, which is not hasn't even got the Doctor in it until the end, except you know as a DVD Easter egg, which I think was genius, by the way. Um, and um, oh, it's brilliant! It, it's scary. It, it's still scary. Um, the the, the oh. angels become less scary. Mr. Moffat, when you saw them move, right? The whole point, the whole reason the angels were scary is because you don't see them move. Blink, I, and you're dead. <laughs> I think I remember Blink. Was that a mansion? Yes, it's the one that... Yes. It's effectively the one that launched Carrie Mulligan's career into the fucking stratosphere. Um, because she was so bloody good in that. And, oh, wait, by the way, there was your first female doctor. Um, but um, sorry, I got if, a if you were going to cast it. someone, she would have been better than fucking Jodie fucking David Tennant. My armpit, my armpit with a face drawn in it would have been better than Jodie Whittaker. Mm. I look, Gareth, you, too. I, I absolutely understand why you think what you do. I, I, I hope right. you are wrong. From my perspective, as a as a nobody who knows nothing, um, if they've cast this person to be the Doctor purely on acting talent and how they're going to portray the Doctor, how they want them to portray the Doctor, then I'm all for it. And they've done the casting right, and they've uh, they've done it purely on acting talent and this is the guy who is going to portray our vision the best. If Plus they couldn't is... have a white doctor. That was the other part of it too. I, I think Last that, that, it, that, it's ill material, right? If this guy auditioned alongside everybody else re re regardless of uh, male, female or what, whatever else you're calling yourself, a toaster um, or colour, it doesn't matter. If this person has auditioned along everyone else and the criteria has been met on acting talent and what they expect the doctor to be and he's met that criteria and he's beat everyone else and he's been the best in the auditions fantastic. I hope that we're down for a great great doctor. I honestly do. I... If it is anything else, it's always going to be shit. I will, I will say this, right? Russell T. Davis likes his gay actors, right? Especially the younger ones. That's not an insinuation. He, he, he likes, he had quite a, a fascination with Russell Tovey um, and cast Russell Tovey in quite a lot of things. Um, Russell Tovey was the, the gay brother in Years and Years, Nigel. 
um, the one that died on the beach. Um, and he was in Doctor Who in the vo- episode of Voyage of the Damned. Um, and I think Russell T. Davis has said in two interviews that he had someone else lined up. This guy came in and blew him away. Now, having seen the guy in sex education, he's a capable actor. I will say this about him. He has never confirmed his sexuality. He has always said that is private. He does not use his sexuality as a political beating thing like a lot of these things. He doesn't say... He's blatantly gay, right? But he doesn't... He keeps that private, right? If I right, don't... Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I don't mind that. I think that's a good... I think it shouldn't have a bearing on your acting ability because it doesn't. He, you're either good said, or you're not. He said some very good things. Russell T. Davis has used it to beat the, the government over the head about banning the BBC, but I know plenty of thespians that are still very pro the BBC. I've argued with a couple of them saying I am anti-BBC, um, and they have told me that they're pro-BBC, and I get it. I am still anti-BBC. They haven't changed my mind um, because I see the BBC is not um, impartial anymore. Um and that was their key thing. Um, but I understand what the, the things that he said that's, that's got Gareth concerned. But um, the, the actor that's been cast has said very good things. And actually, when he was quizzed by one thing about his sexuality, he says, I'm not talking about that. I, I'm playing a character. You know, good. the fact that he plays Eric in, in, in... I mean, let's get it. Let's get this straight, right? The actor is gay. <laughs> Okay, he is blatantly gay, or he might be bisexual, but I'm pretty sure he's gay. Um, but um, he doesn't want to talk about that. So I'll give him that. You know, I'll give him th- those dues. And what he's said about playing the Doctor has been great. And I, I do think I get what Russell T. Davis is seeing in him. I think I get it. I think I get where they're going with this. And I think it could be good. But... They might be. They might have this idea in their mind as to the type of doctor, the quirkiness or whatever that they're looking for, and he might be portraying that perfectly compared to other people who have gone for the role. Hmm. He might have. I don't. I don't know. I. I've never seen that program, so I can't he... comment on how good he is. I like the fact that he's saying my sexuality is is literally nothing to do with you. Um, I'm an actor, judge me on that essentially with what he's saying if he's not prepared to talk about then it doesn't matter outside of the context of well, his fucking bedroom and what he does Yeah, I, it doesn't I, it really I, doesn't. when he said they, them, when he described the doctor that's the bit that made me go yes, oh, but that, well, there that has been a lady to... There has it has been a lady, you know. Now, so that they, they, they are a they and them at some point. You can't just refer to him as a him in these days because a million people will get upset with him about it. So he might just be being correct. I suppose in in the context of yes, he's now been a female, so he can no longer be just him. And as a and doctor. then he went and then he went on about representation. Yes. Who? But everybody goes Russell. on about that, Gareth. No, uh, yeah, Russell T. Davis, yeah, he did. He went on about representation. All right. But what he also the, said, the... but he did say that there was an audition process. They had somebody else lined up, and this guy blew him away. Oh, yeah, this is Sylvester McCoy's welcome. Right. So this I actually liked. Hang on a second. Welcome, Shitty Gatwa. Welcome to Am our unique audio? club, the Doctor Who Club. You are very welcome. And we'll be delight to watch you take on the uh, Daleks, the Cybermen, the Weeping Angels, and the critics. <laughs> <laughs> we all had to do that when we took over. Anyway, I wish you well. I wish you everything you wish for yourself and the TARDIS. I hope you have great adventures. I know you will. I had. All the best, mate. All the best. I look forward to meeting you someday. Bye. Another Scott. Way. I love the fact. Sylvester McCoy. Yeah, the fan thank of you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your beautiful message. It means the absolute world, especially coming from a fellow Scot. <laughs> especially coming from a fellow Scot. Um, I am so looking forward 
to facing all of those foes, especially the last one that you mentioned. And the support from you and all the other doctors has just filled me with the strength that I will be able to do that. Thank you so much for welcoming me, welcoming me into the family. It means the world. Sylvester, you're a gentleman. All the best. I'm going to ask one question. Was Sylvester McCoy turning up and talking about Doctor Who again because we might be in store for a surprise? What, in the 60th? So I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there that, you know, he's alive. He does do conventions. Uh, conventions. He still loves Doctor Who, and and you know, just sending a message saying, well, you know, if, if welcome if, to the Doctor. If, he didn't do that for Jodie. Did he, he, did he not? No, he didn't do that for Jodie. No, he didn't do that for Jodie. Um, the other part of it too is if if he's in it, there's a good chance that uh, David Tennant's father-in-law will be in it. Um, you got yes. a picture. Your dad met David Tennant's <laughs> father-in-law. Oh, you don't know this, him. right? Who's David so, Tennant's father-in-law. Right. Okay, no, no. Right. So get this. Do you remember the episode of Doctor Who where do the Doctor has a daughter? Kind of. No, right? he won't remember that. He, this right. Is so, he, he, okay. He, he, okay. So there is an episode of Doctor Who where the Doctor kind of gets cloned, and this girl is born, and she's awesome because she is the daughter of the Doctor. There is an explanation as to why she's awesome. All right. David Tennant met that girl and married her. Her father was the fifth doctor, is Peter Davison. Her father is Peter Davison, who was a doctor. <laughs> so he literally married the doctor's daughter. <laughs> really. And, and, and yes, evidently... Irony, it, yeah. They've had Go about on. fucking eight billion children. Yes. Because There's a joke. Oh, okay, that he's, guy. He's Sorry, had to Google him. <laughs> Peter Davison, your dad, you got a picture of you and your dad. Your dad David, um, David Tennant married his daughter, who who appeared as the doctor's daughter in an episode. With do you want to hear something funny? Surname. Do you know what yeah. Peter Davison's real surname is? Go on. Tennant. <laughs> but David Tennant's real surname isn't Tennant, it's McDonald. Yes, um, I know that. I know, I know. I, um, I'm a, oh, I'm, the irony. Yeah, they, anyway, I think, they, I think they've had a lot of kids. Stop it. Yes, they have yes. had a lot of kids. I think that might be a good place to stop it. Thank you very much, gent ladies and gentlemen, for listening and watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. <gasps> Goodbye. Ciao. Bye -bye.